peace. Now you can call me whom? According to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Simeon said, Lord, my hand have, have gotten to touch your son. My hands have got to hold the promise. The Holy Ghost showed me that one day I was going to hold the Messiah in my arms. Now it's come to pass. Lord, my eyes have seen your salvation. You can call me whom now? Glory to God. You can call me whom now? Ah, but I'm preaching to somebody on tonight that will say, Pastor Sean, God made some promises to me. The Holy Ghost have showed me some mighty things, but my hands hadn't touched it yet. Ah, but I stopped by to come in agreement with you on tonight to let you know it's going to come to pass. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. If he said it, he'll make it good. If he spoke it, he going to bring it to pass. Just a mere fact that the Holy Ghost reveal it to you. It's going to come to pass. If he showed you that you're going to be a millionaire, if he showed you that you're going to be wealthy, if he showed you that your business is going to explode, if he showed you that it's going to work out. If he showed you that you're coming into the promised land, I'm coming in agreement with you on tonight to let you know if the Holy Ghost showed it to you, it's so. If the Holy Ghost showed it to you, it shall come to pass. The Bible says so come to pass in the last days, said God. I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Glory to God. I'll tell you what, let me prophesy to you right now. The Holy Ghost gave me a prophecy just a few hours ago. My God, my God, I feel this. I feel this tonight. I said the Holy Ghost gave me a prophecy just a few hours ago. Here's the prophetic word. Everything that has ever held you back, everything that has suppressed you and limited you, it's about to be broken from off of your life in the name of Jesus. I still hear the Holy Ghost saying, tell my people, no more limitations over their lives. No more, I want to speak directly to you. No more limitation over your life. I say no more, no more limitation. I break the devil of limitation from over your life. Friend, get ready to fly higher than you've ever been. Get ready to meet people that you've never dreamed that God would have bring them across your path. People who will add value to you. People who will believe in the mandate that God have put on your life. Remember Joseph. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Can you feel this anointing tonight? I say, can you feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost? God's getting ready to resurrect your situation. God's getting ready to take you to another level in God. The Bible says one night, Joseph went to bed a prisoner. He went to bed a prisoner. He went to bed in prison. He went to bed sleeping on something hard. And within 24 hours, God turned his situation around. One night he went to bed in prison and the next night he went to bed in a palace. One night he went to bed the prisoner and the next night he went to bed the prime minister of Egypt. Glory to God. I said when God gets ready to raise you up, it's not going to take him a whole long time. And I feel the anointing. I feel the prophetic anointing of the Holy Ghost on me to tell you you God's about to give somebody a supernatural 24-hour miracle. God is about to give you a suddenly. My God, the Bible says in the book of Acts, and it came to pass, they were all in one place, and they were on one accord, and the Bible says suddenly, I feel a suddenly tonight. I said, I feel a suddenly. Can somebody shout amen? I said, I feel a suddenly. The Bible says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And the Bible says there sat upon each and every one cloven tongues like eyes of fire. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them a 
utterance. I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost, he is a secret revealer. If God showed it to you, it's going to come to pass. Glory to God. Mambre koshanda rababasa. Rakoto robo samanamamamamande. Rabasataraba. I prophesy to you that 2014 is not going to come to a close without you experiencing the supernatural turnaround. That's what God told me coming into 2014. He says, son, I want you to prophesy to my people and tell them that this is the year. I feel it on me right now. This is the year of the supernatural turnaround. I declare to you right now under this prophetic anointing of the Holy Ghost that 2014 is your year of the supernatural turnaround. Ah, glory to God. I say 2014 is your year of the supernatural turnaround. Things, things that were stubborn in 2013, things that wouldn't move, things that, that stress you out, things that were stubborn, it's about to move on your behalf. In 2013, you were not the head, you were the tail but in 2014 there is an anointing being released from the Holy Ghost right now God's about to make you the head and not the tail he's about to make you the lender and not the borrower he's about to make you the landlord and not the renter I'm prophesying to somebody who am I talking to I say who am I talking to who am I preaching to I'm preaching to somebody that God's about to bring you into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. You about to leave the land of not enough. You coming into the land of more than enough. That's the God we serve. He is my El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the God who is more than enough. He is my Jehovah Jireh, which means that God will provide. Remember when Abraham went to offer his son Isaac up as a sacrifice in obedience to God. Isaac said, Father, you got wood. You got the, the thing to light the fire. But I don't see the sacrifice. My God, and in that moment, the Holy Ghost revealed something to Abraham. Abraham looked at Isaac and he said, my son, God shall provide. My son, God shall provide. I want to say something to you ladies on this call. I want to say something to you men. God shall provide. My God, can, can I get somebody to just shout it? God shall provide. I say God is going to provide. He'll make a way where there is no way. He'll send a strong east wind and bring in the quill. When you wake up in the morning, you'll have manna surrounding your houses. That's the God we serve. He will take five loaves and two fishes and feed over 20,000 people. Glory to God. We serve a God. He says, I'm your God. I'll make a way in the wilderness. I'll make a way in the Red Sea. I'll make a way in the desert. He is your Jehovah Jireh. If you're hungry, he'll be bread to you. He said, I'm the bread of life. If you're thirsty, he said, I'm the living water. And whoever drinks of me will never thirst again. My God, I'm talking to somebody. God's about to bring you out. I say, God is about to bring you out. The Holy Ghost. He is a secret revealer. Mumra kasanda rababasa. Promotion's headed to someone's house. I said promotion is headed to somebody's house. Somebody's about to cross over the Jordan. I'm, I'm in agreement with you, sis. Someone's about to cross over Jordan. Someone's about to go through the Red Sea. Glory to God. Me and my wife saw, saw an article on Yahoo just the other day about this man and his wife who used to take walks close by their house. And they would always walk by this can that was halfway sticking up out the ground, an old rusty can, that they really never paid much attention to it. And one day, the man decided, man, I need to pay a little more attention to this can poking up out this ground. He said he noticed the can had two ends, so he dug it up. And when they broke the can open, it had a bunch of gold coins in it minted from around between 1849 to 1879, worth $10 million. Man, I'm, I'm preaching to somebody 
who's about to stumble on that type of blessing. I say I'm preaching to somebody who's about to stumble on that kind of a blessing. The same pathway you've been walking for all these years. You didn't see it before, but I tell you when the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, he will open your eyes and he'll cause you to see things that you didn't see before because he is a secret revealer. I said the Holy Ghost is a revealer. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, he says, I'll give you the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I am the Lord God of Israel which called you by your name. And I pray right now that God would open your eyes. I pray that you begin to see opportunities that you didn't see before. I pray that God would allow you to solve a problem that you didn't know you could solve before. That people would pay you money for it. I release that anointing on you right now in the name of Jesus. I said he's a secret revealer. I said he's a secret revealer. I said the Holy Ghost is a secret revealer. I said he's a secret revealer. Glory, 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 glory. Open our eyes, God. Open our eyes, God. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Another way the Holy Ghost leads us is through restlessness. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, Paul says this, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from there into Macedonia. I'm talking to somebody. If there's a restlessness in your spirit, that's the Holy Ghost trying to get your attention. God's trying to show something to you. Maybe he's trying to warn you of something. I say you better pay attention to it. If you don't have no peace about something, don't move forward. I say if you don't have peace, don't move forward. The Bible says, I believe in Colossians 3.15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That word rule right there means let the Holy Ghost, let him be the umpire. Let the peace of God make the call. Let the peace of God be the thing that costs you to say yes. Let the peace of God be the thing that costs you to make that decision or agree with that person. If you don't have no peace about it, don't do it. If you're about to make a business deal and you don't have no peace about it, don't do it. If someone's about to give you money and you don't have no peace about it, don't do it. Because the Bible says, let the peace of God rule. I shall let the peace of God rule. I shall let the peace of God rule. But on the other hand, if you got the peace of God on it, do it. I said, if you got peace about it, do it. David said he leads me beside still waters. Still waters, that means peace, tranquility, rest. Are you listening to me tonight? I believe the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody on tonight. I said, God is about to bless somebody. I said, the blessings of God is about to come on your life. It's about to overtake you. It's about to overwhelm you. It's about to override and overrule your situation of debt. I believe God is releasing them. I say, I believe God is releasing blessings, blessings untold, blessings that you don't have room enough to receive.